during the last two weeks we were hearing from the word of God about the priesthood. Because the book of Revelation very clearly says that he called us to be priests and kings. So we heard that God had a plan and a purpose for our salvation. We again read from the book of Peter that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So God has redeemed each one of us by paying a great price. The price of the blood of his beloved son Jesus. So that we can minister unto God as kings and priests. Now where do we minister? This is something very important for us to understand. Because we've all been taught in the traditional churches about the place where God's presence is. The people who are authorized to minister unto God. But we are trying to understand from the word of God what is the truth? What is God's plan? What is God's plan for the people who are supposed to minister unto him? And who are the people who God has chosen to minister to him? We find in the Old Testament about the, the sanctuary that God wanted to be built so that his presence could be permanently residing in a place. We know the Ark of the Covenant. The children of Israel as they traveled, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant with them. But at last there was a resting place. And David found that his, his house was much better than the, uh, the place where, God, where the Ark of the Covenant was resting. And therefore God asked David to build a temple. Of course he did not permit David to build. Because as the word says, his hands were full of blood. So his son Solomon had the privilege of building a temple for the Lord. And if you read in the book of Exodus chapter 25, 26, 27, you'll find that the plan of the pattern was given to Moses actually. When God redeemed his people from the bondage in Israel, he also foresaw a place where he would be resting. A place where he wanted his children to worship him. A place where he wanted people to minister unto him. So the plan of the temple was given not to David or to Solomon. It was given to Moses. If you read the book of Exodus chapter 25, 26, 27, you will find God gives in very minute details about how the temple should be built, how the sanctuary should be made, and what are the things that should be in the sanctuary, everything. You can at your leisure read it. So you'll find that God created a, a temple, or rather God wanted man to make a temple so that his presence could rest. So one thing you must understand is that the temple in the old covenant is a temple ordained by God according to his wish, according to his plan and purpose. Again, you'll find that God's presence was definitely there. If you look into the book of 1 Kings chapter 6 verses 12 or 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 10 and 11, you'll find God's presence is definitely there. Maybe we should read out 1 Kings. I'll read it out to you. So God gives a condition that if uh, you fulfill certain things that I want you to do, then my manifested presence will be there. Like we hear again in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 20, the word of God says that when you preach my words, I will accompany them. So it is that God's presence is there when you preach the word. Even today, right now, he is here. And he will confirm every word with signs and wonders. The word of God says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So his words are capable of producing what it says to be. Because as the book of Romans says, that he is able, that the one who promised is able to perform. So there is no, no disability with God. So his presence is very much there. What of God, like I said in the book of um, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 12 and 30 says, Concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, keep all my commandments and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you which I spoke to your father David. So you must understand, God performs only when you keep your word. It is not that the word of God is not able to perform. The word of God is not able, is, is, is weak. It is that the word of God operates in your life uh, when you perform the things that God wants you to do. So often you find that we are not getting anything from the word. It's because you are not keeping the commandments of God. And if you do, then he says, And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. So God's manifested presence was promised there. Again you will find when the, uh, the temple was built in Jerusalem and the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the temple, 
you will find the presence of God was so thick, was so thick that the, the priest could not minister. He says, uh, and it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not continue ministering, because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. That is in 1 Kings 8 verses 10 and 11. So you'll find God's, he, the, the temple was built according to his wish, according to his plan. And God's manifested presence was there. And who could go into the presence of God? It was only the high priest once a year with the blood of an animal. A sacrificial animal's blood had to be taken. Because all man, man is all unclean. And it is only the blood that cleanses sins. Therefore the blood was signifying the blood, that the cleansing that was took, took place. And as an as a evidence, as a witness of the cleansing, the high priest was, would take the blood of an animal which was sacrificed, or rather on that animal, the sins of the people were put. They say that, you know, you lay your hands on the head of the animal which is going to be sacrificed. So there was a transfer. There was a transfer of my sin into the animal and then the punishment was dealt with which I should have had on the animal and the animal was killed. So it is this witness of the, of the sacrifice that took place the blood is a witness which the high priest went once and for all. And so you'll find there, I could not enter, you could not enter if you were living in those times in the Holy of Holies. Because the outer court was the place where we had to sit or rather we had to enter. Nowhere else we could go. And into the holy place, it was only the priest who could go. And into the Holy of Holies, it was only the high priest who would go. So you'll find that access to God was limited according to the, the rules that was ordained by God. It is not that the high priest or the priests got together and made a rule saying that, okay, we will not allow the believers to go in. Or neither it was not the high priest who took over the rule, who took over the, uh, the administration of the priesthood and said, look, none of you are allowed to go in. Only I will go. The, the formality or the rule was prescribed by God himself because you will find that the old covenant certain laws were established by which certain things had to be done in a certain way but you will find that those things never brought about a permanent solution for the redemption of sin because it could not cleanse you properly it was only a, a price paid it was only a price paid for the sin but there was no inner cleansing taking place because the, uh, what shall I say, man continued to commit the same sins repeatedly. And for that purpose, one had to be cleansed very often. And therefore, this priest had to go very often into the sanctuary to offer or to show as a witness that the blood has been shed according to the will of God or according to his requirement, the righteous requirement of the law that blood has been shed. So it was a never ending repeated process by which the, the animal had to be killed, the priest had to go to the altar with the blood. So you will find the access was not there for everyone and this was a repeated affair that was going on. So. But in the new covenant which is established by God, Jesus Christ, while dying at the, when he died at the cross at Calvary, there was an establishment of a new covenant and there you will find that the tabernacle was not, was not something which was not built with hands. There was a tabernacle which God wanted which is not built by hands. If you look into the book of Exodus chapter 25, actually God reveals a shadow of the tabernacle in the book of Exodus chapter 25 verses 8. I think we'll read that. The book of Exodus chapter 25. And God says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. So that sanctuary that Lord is talking of is initially the old, under the old covenant, that sanctuary was the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was going to be placed in the Holy of Holies. But if you look again into God's plan, great plan in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16, there is another tabernacle that the Lord is talking of. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. 
I will be their God and they shall be my people. So in the new covenant, under the new covenant, the temple, the quality of the temple changed totally. One was a man-made temple. The other was a temple which was not man-made, but it was the heart, the heart of our, each one of us. Because we are the temple of the living God. Again, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 19, verse 20, also very clearly says about, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you have been purchased for a price and that you do not belong to yourselves. So in the new covenant, you will find God's plan and purpose of where he wants to reside is no longer in a man-made temple but it is in our hearts that is where he wants to come and reside this is very clear also if you read the book of revelations chapter 3 verse 20 god says i come and knock at your heart and if you will allow me to enter in i will come and dine with you i will come in and dine with you so you'll find god's presence has totally changed from a man-made temple into our very hearts why because the original creation god wanted to fellowship with man and he wanted to have a personal loving relationship with man and even when you talk of where, where is the repository of love where is it you say it is in our hearts it is in our hearts we all know heart is a symbol of love so god wants to love us he wants us to reciprocate his love for him so his whole relationship rather being based on a law, has now become based on love. And therefore, the place of his residence also changed from what is stipulated by the law into what is stipulated by love. Because love, heart is a repository of our love for him. So he has changed, the, place, the qualitative place has changed and his presence is no longer in the temple, in the man-made temple, but it is in our hearts. Again, you'll find the access to God access to God has also totally changed earlier the access the law required that it was only the high priest who had an access to God now according to the new covenant the word of God very clearly says that each one of us have the boldness to come before God the book of Ephesians chapter 2 very clearly says that we both by one spirit have now access to the father so the access has changed so everything concerning the temple has changed so we must understand that there was a, a transition from the old covenant into the new covenant. And where did the transition take place? It took place at the cross at Calvary. Because the word of God in the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 20 says, This is the blood of the new covenant. So it is by the shedding of the blood of the cross at Calvary that the new covenant has been established. And when the new covenant was established, the old ceases to exist. Because God... God has changed the place of his residence. His residence has changed. Now you must understand one thing. In the old covenant, God's presence was there in the temple at Jerusalem. But in the new covenant, God's presence is in our hearts. This is something very clear. And Jesus Christ himself very, very clearly and without any, any shadow of doubt says to the Samaritan woman in the gospel of St. John chapter 4, woman that it is no longer in Jerusalem that you will worship. Jerusalem signifies the temple. And to the Samaritan again she says, it is no longer in this high mountain that you are going to worship. There is a, a mixed cultural difference. Samaritans we know uh, have been influenced. The, the Jews have been influenced by the, the Assyrian king. Brought in a lot of settlers there. And there was a, a mixture. So they were unpure. That is why a Jew, a proper Jew never would have anything to do with a Samaritan. They were ostracized from society. But still they had some things of the old worship. They still acknowledged Jehovah as God. But their form of worship was influenced and corrupted by the Assyrian uh, culture. So there also since they are worshipping Jehovah, they said it is neither on the mountain nor at Jerusalem that the father will be worshipped. He will be worshipped in spirit and in truth. So there was a qualitative change. Now why I am saying this is, because you also understand, if, if God is going to be worshipped, someone is to minister to him. Now who is the person to minister to God? According to the old covenant, when his presence was in the temple, God wanted the high priest and the priest to minister to him. That is why he selected the tribe of Levi. And out of the tribe of Levi, he selected Aaron and his descendants to be priests. 
and all the other Levites like we heard earlier when they minister at the temple doing different different works but in the new covenant God has changed all that God changed everything but the thing is if we do not change with God then we won't be doing things according to his, his desire that is why in the same chapter 4 of John says it is such that the father is seeking so father today father God today seeks people to worship him in spirit and in truth not according to the old covenant rituals old covenant requirements of the law that has all been set aside so I am trying to tell you again and again that the old priesthood which was good which was the law had changed with the coming of Jesus Christ that is why there is a qualitative difference in the form of worship again you will find that the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 we know that Jesus took our sins our curses which is under the law on the cross and he was hung so that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that Jesus Christ might also that the promise of inheritance that God has promised will come upon us by the revelation of the Holy Spirit of the living God so he did all this so that he will be able to I mean the Holy Spirit of the living God will be able to tell us that a new ch a change has taken place in everything your, even your relationship with God has changed now you are considered as children of God if you can come under the blood so when he says that this is the blood of the new covenant one thing we must understand very clearly that you can come under the covenant only through the blood because it is the blood that has established the covenant the new covenant so the righteous requirements of the new covenant is upon those people who have come under the blood of Jesus Christ and therefore as the word of God says in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 14 that the Gentiles might also inherit the promises given to Abraham and that can be revealed only by the Holy Spirit of the living God so this revelation today we need revelation knowledge about what God wants us to do earlier the spirit of the living God was not there on everyone see God changed his all plans See, we, we know, we also change plans. When something doesn't work out, you change plans. Earlier in the Old Covenant, you will find that the presence of the Holy Spirit was where? Where was it? It was only in some people. But the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 says, Afterward. Afterward. Say afterward. And where is afterward? Where is the point of time? At the cross at Calvary. Afterward. When... When the spirit of the living God will be poured out on all flesh. The availability of the spirit of the living God will be for all mankind. See there is a total expansion of God's plan. There is a total opening up of God's plan. But what happens is sometimes we do not. We are so conservative. We are so religious. We are so bound by the law and the rituals and the traditions. That we are, we are sitting in darkness. We are not able to understand the benefits that God has given to each one of us under the new covenant. That is why very clearly, my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to tell you, the, the gospel says that John was the greatest prophet. Right? He was the greatest prophet born to woman. But the next word God says, but he who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Because you must understand, the person who is in the kingdom of heaven has the presence of the Holy Spirit with him today. You know, the availability of the Holy Spirit. His presence, manifested presence is with you, with every one of us. Because if you are a child of God, God's verse says that you are led by the Spirit of the living God. That is, a, that is the, the, the evidence of your being a son of God or a daughter of God. The book of Romans says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So everyone has. And again the book of John says, that he will send his spirit to abide with you forever. So these are great promises of God. That the very Holy Spirit which raised, who raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit who created the whole universe. The power that created. The spoken word came from the Lord. And the power of the Holy Spirit created the whole universe. That same Holy Spirit is in you. Is in you my dear brother. Is in you. So there is a, such a change that has taken place. 
This was not there before the new covenant came. New covenant came, there were prophets, there were judges, there were many anointed people. That's it. No one else had an access to the Holy presence of the Holy Spirit. So God changed his plan. Now why don't you get into the new plan? And if you're going to stick to the old plan, you're not going to come under the benefits of the new plan. You're not going to get, really get into the promises that God made to Abraham. The promises that God made to Abraham are still available for us. The blessings that God gave Abraham. So you'll find that the old, that the old has gone and the new has come. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 says, For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies, that is representations of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So now what I'm trying to tell you is, now Jesus Christ is a high priest. No longer do you need a high priest who is of the order of, of the Levitical order. Who is of the descendant of Aaron. But we have today a high priest who is of the order of Melchizedek. And we know that Jesus Christ is of the tribe of Judah. And not of, not of Levi. So today we have a high priest who, not enter, who did not enter the the what is it the temple which is made as a copy of the heavenly one but he says he entered into heaven itself he entered into heaven itself into the presence of god for what for what he says for us into the presence of god for you and me so we have a great high priest again the verse 25 of hebrews 9 says not that he should offer himself often as a high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. So here you'll find that there are two things that took place here. That Jesus Christ was not entering the, high, uh, the presence of God every time. He had to enter only once. But the other high priest had to enter more often. He had to enter every time. Secondly, Jesus Christ entered God's presence with his own blood. The high priest entered the presence of God in the tabernacle, in the temple, with the blood of an animal. As the book of Romans says very clearly, that if the blood of an animal could cleanse you from sin according to the law, then how much more won't the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you? So you must understand, a qualitative change, my dear brother, my dear sister, has taken place. The priest, the Levitical priest cannot now offer any sacrifice for you. Because even the law requiring regarding sacrifice has been set aside. What I want to say is that the law cannot save you when the word of God says in the book of Galatians. Chapter 5 verse 4 says that the law cannot save you. And if you are depending upon the law to save you, you are estranged from Christ and you are fallen from grace. See that is, the word of God is not discounting the books that were law prior to the establishment of the new covenant. It is only that the law as far as your salvation is concerned, as far as the forgiveness of sins is concerned, as laid down in the books, cannot save you anymore because what is now acceptable to God is not the conditions prescribed in the law, but the conditions prescribed in grace. Are you with me? Because Jesus Christ says, I am not come to set aside the law, but I have come to fulfill the law. And the fulfillment of the law is that Jesus, God wants you to have a one sacrifice through which you get eternal redemption from sin. That you do not need a sacrifice to be continually or repeatedly offered for you. So you find that what he has set aside is a requirement on your part to get forgiveness of sins. Everything else is good. The book of Deuteronomy has not been set aside. The book of Exodus has not been set aside. The book of Numbers has not been set aside. The book of Leviticus has not been set aside. The book of Genesis has not been set aside. But what, whatever is required in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, for the forgiveness of sins has been set aside once and for all. Because the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made set aside all these requirements. So what I am trying to tell you is, my dear brother, my dear sister, you understand, today Jesus Christ is the priest. And you must understand one thing. Why did he set aside all these things? And why did he die? He died so that you can have a headship with him. 
he died so that you can be restored back into your inheritance that you can be a son of god you can be a daughter of god and if you are following the rich, the, the requirements of the law it says that the Aaron's son can become a priest that Aaron's son son can become a priest then if jesus christ is a priest then you and i are priests because we are of the same lineage of jesus christ but we are not of the levitical priest but we are of the priesthood of the order of melchizedek of which jesus christ is a high priest so this is the thing we must understand if that be the case then as a new priesthood is there established by god then the requirements of the new priesthood are totally different it is not only a class of people you must go into god's plan then the book of exodus itself very clearly says that god redeemed his people so they can be kings and priests the book of revelation says again it says kings and priests the book of peter says a royal priesthood so god wants you and me to be priests we have heard this before but i want to tell you again and again that god's plan for redeeming you is to be a priest so that you can minister to him god wants every believer every disciple to minister to him it is not the not the obligation or not the the privilege of a select few to minister to god see that was in the old covenant so if you are in a system if you are in a if you are following anything any 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 religious requirement or tradition where a, a person has been nominated as a priest to minister to god and you are like uh, uh, the people who are in the outer court then that is not the god's plan for today that was god's plan before jesus christ died but after jesus christ died he wanted everyone to be a priest to minister to him so in the new new plan of god everyone is a priest how many of you how many of you are are in agreement with me hallelujah so that is why he set aside everything that is why christ came to do god's will you must understand because he died you and i have a right a privilege to become a priest to god a king a king has authority and the priest ministers with